For those of you that are in sales of any kind, it does not have to be logistics or trucking or freight brokering of any kind of sales type of job where you are depending on pretty much a commission to make a living where it's not even a base plus commission type of salary. Even if it is base plus commission, you are still primarily depending on a commission to make a, a living, to feed your family and to do all that kind of stuff. So for you guys that are looking to, um, you know, get your skills up to par in order to actually close business and actually get business from your customers, LinkedIn can be a place where you can do that. But I want to share with you uh, just in general what you're going to expect when you go on LinkedIn to start prospecting for customers. First off, it is not a quick fix. It's not going to get you customers right off the bat and you're, you're going to go insane with the amount of work that you have. That's not the case. You have to connect with these people. And I know it sounds cliche, but you're going to have to build a relationship with these people, a business relationship online with these people. But this has to be a focus driven type of approach for you. It has to be a consultative type of approach for you. And it has to be centered around that prospect. And it has to be genuine and curious. So you know that old adage when people say you have to uh, or people do business with people they like. Uh, this is true, right? So if you can approach someone genuinely and on LinkedIn, of course, and actually genuinely be curious about what they have going on with their business and how you can be of assistance, whatever sales or service or type of product you may sell or provide, respectively, you have to really ask yourself the question, is this someone that I see myself doing business with? Okay, and if you see a pain point or a trouble, uh, a problem that they're having on their end, and you have the tools to fix it, you have to also have the confidence to put yourself out there. Okay, it's not just about, oh, you know what, this is what I do. And we're the best and nobody's better. And you know, that's that's that that's the be all end all you got to connect with us, nobody's going to do it better than us. It's more like approaching them as a friend saying, Hey, what, what are you looking for? What are your pain points? What are your problems? And this has helped me close deals throughout my career in logistics more so than if I ever, and I did in the beginning when I started to use LinkedIn about maybe eight, nine years ago, where it was more like, you know, fresh out of, you know, more or less university trying to figure out what I'm going to do, how I'm going to approach things and not having a sales background. So my approach was very, uh, stale. It wasn't uh, focused or centered around them. I was almost more or less a traditionally annoying salesperson where it's just about me. I want to make the sale, the transaction to move on. And I've really developed from then. I've changed and I've improved my methods. And it all has come with being genuine, <clears throat> being actually curious about the customer or person that I'm approaching and trying to sell my services from from that uh, from that uh, approach. But it's not going to happen overnight either. Okay, it's going to sometimes take several follow ups for anybody to even reply, even if the reply back is a no, even initially, if it's a no, a lot of times it's a no, not right now, you know, check back later. Okay, that type of approach from their end of the transaction. Okay. So if that's the case, that's okay. Go back to the drawing board. You should keep some kind of Microsoft Excel document or a CRM if you're using one and write down your rejections, write down the rejections from those people that you're trying to sell to. And this really is a PSA for all salespeople. This is not just for my industry. Okay. And also you may have a lot of people that give you um, uh, feedback something like this that it says on my shirt. I don't know if you can see it. I'm not going to say it, but you guys can see kind of clearly what it says. There will be people that, that do this. Uh, for example, even yesterday when I reached out to a gentleman, a prospect, you know, I, I gave him a, a short, not, it wasn't a pitch. It was a short, Hey, how are you? Blah, 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 blah. You know? And his uh, reply was, I can't help you period. Even though, all of you know his his title his company the research on the company 
that I did, the products they sell, they need the services that I sell. It's clear as day that they need it. But the gentleman was just not having any of it. Okay. That doesn't mean forever it's going to stay that way with him. I could re reapproach him down the line and uh, try again with the follow up. And follow up is very important. You have to do your five, six follow up sometimes. Okay. It's not going to happen overnight. It's not, this is not a quick fix. Like I said, if you're going on LinkedIn, you're getting the premium subscription thinking now this is going to take you to the next level. You still have to put a valiant, hard effort into making uh, making uh, the sale happen. OK, and um, I also had a recent uh, a recent uh, feedback from a shipper uh, that is uh, people that I sell to my services. And uh, her question to me was what makes me different from everyone else that comes to solicit her for business? Okay. What I, what I can provide, what am I good at and what am I not so good at? This is a golden type of prospect, you know, having someone ask questions back to you in this manner. So you, you two can have a conversation back and forth is obviously golden and something that uh, definitely will bring you much more success moving forward it's gonna, you're going to be better off for it now that's a lot better than having somebody reply and just say i can't help you period okay that's that's a hard rejection to get through because you're going to have to reach back out to them with not much to go off of okay but with this other lady or with this other person that that said that uh you know how are you different what are you good at what are you not good at that gives you substance to go off of Okay, that gives you food for thought to go back to the drawing board as a salesperson and uh, and try to utilize it that way. Okay, and, and see how you can go through that rejection and uh, achieve your goals. And ultimately, yes, even as a consultative salesperson approach, you still want to make the sale. It's just a, a longer method of, of closing deals, um, you know, and uh, if you and I'm a firm believer in this. If you sell just on price, you're going to die on price. Okay. A lot of times, um, you know, price and quality of service, a lot of times they don't match up hundred percent, right? If you buy something, for example, directly from a manufacturer and they put their heart and soul into designing the highest quality, they engineered it to the highest quality degree, They've done everything in their power to make sure that you're going to be a satisfied customer to leave positive reviews wherever you buy their products. OK, now from that perspective, OK, you're going to get a super quality piece of product, whatever you're buying, but it's probably going to come at a premium price. Premium doesn't always mean expensive. It just means the initial price you pay for it is going to be something that's going to be elevated compared to their competitors. And then their competitors, they're a step below them. So they're selling the same product for cheaper um, with less quality. Now, at face value, if something is $17.99 compared to uh, $65.99, you're going to say, you know what? Uh, probably I'm going to go with this cheaper option because, hey, it's the same product. Why not? But you may have to repeat the buying of this four, five, six times before you replace this 6599 object because of the quality. And at the end of the day, this cheaper product becomes more expensive over time. And it's the same thing in the sales approach on LinkedIn as well. OK, you have to have a balance between price and quality. OK, and, and uh, don't sell yourself short. If you truly believe in as a salesperson, whatever it is, it could be writing service that you're selling. It could be um, talent acquisition. You know, it could be a human resource consulting type of business that you're selling. OK, if you believe in what you're selling, which you should, you shouldn't be selling it if you don't believe in it. This is going to make the sale a lot easier. If we can put a ease or hardness to it, it's going to be easier from that perspective. OK, I hope you like this video. Please give it a like, a comment, sub sub subscribe for even more content about sales. It doesn't just have to be logistics and trucking. It could be sales in general. You could come out of this 
a better salesperson by following the channel and subscribing to it. And of course, yes, it does help me from that front as I do want to grow the channel to bigger than it currently is. So thank you very much for listening. And um, the shirt is not for you, by the way. This is just a shirt I like to wear for funsies. You know what I'm saying? All right. Cheers. Bye-bye.